In this tutorial, we're going to look at how you would apply uncertainties to your experimental data. Now, for this internal or practice internal, we've got the relationship between mass and the period of a spring. So, the masses that we used, each weighing 50 grams, um, or the mass of 50 grams, they have uncertainty. And not only that, the period that we measured also has an uncertainty due to the range of values that you got in your trials. To begin with, we'll talk quickly about the mass. Now, working out the uncertainty in the mass over here is not as easy because we don't really know what the uncertainty is. Um, sometimes a manufacturer might actually specify what the uncertainty might be. In this case, they haven't. So what we're going to do is really just um, make an educated guess. And what I'm going to do is insert a column that we can put our uncertainty in. And I'm just going to actually highlight it a different color so that we're clear that it is actually an uncertainty that we're looking at. So we're going to call this one here the uncertainty. Spell that right in mass. Okay. And the uncertainty in mass, we're actually just going to wrap that text to make it all fit nicely. Okay. The uncertainty mass, um, we're going to call it 4% for all of the values. So really what it is here is it's the percentage uncertainty in mass like that. Okay. Now, being a percentage, it doesn't have units. Um, but generally what we do is we round percentage uncertainties to two significant figures. So basically, all of these will be 4%. And if I want to change that to two significant figures, I can simply do that by moving the decimal places. Now later on, when we do our error bars on our graph, we're going to need what's called the absolute uncertainties. We can't really do the error bars using percentage uncertainties. So what I'll do is I'll insert another column, and I'm going to call this one here the absolute uncertainty. Uncertainty in all right this one here does in fact have units of course um, because the units of mass are kilograms so I can chuck that in there as well okay from that point what we want to do is actually work out what 4% of the mass is so to do that, it's pretty straightforward. What we want to do is type in the equal sign, and we're going to take that number there, we're going to divide it by 100, and we're going to times that by the mass. So that is how you work out what 4% of 50 grams is. Now the reason why it's given us a zero value is because of the rounding. We can fix that later. If I double click the um, little green box in the right hand corner, that is going to give me all the uncertainties and the mass. I want to fix up the rounding problem. Uncertainty should be rounded to one significant figure. So if we look at that, um, those ones are okay. I'm just going to fix up these last two so that they're all one significant figure. So absolute uncertainties should be rounded to one significant figure. Once we've done that, we want to look at the uncertainty now for the period, which is a little bit trickier. Now the reason being is the period is the average of a number of results and then divided through by 10. So the rule is you want to, or the uncertainty, the absolute uncertainty is half the range. The range is the biggest number in your trials so for the very first trial here, we've got 7.71 minus the smallest number of your trials, 7.28, and it's half that, so 
half the difference. Now, the easiest way to do that is to use some formulas. What we don't want to really have to do is go through and manually figure out what the biggest number is and what the smallest number is in each of our trials. So what we'll do, I'll just move the spreadsheet along a little bit. We're going to have a column over here. And we're going to call this one max for TNT. Okay, so what is the maximum of the um, trials of TNT? And that's measured in seconds. What we're going to do now is we're going to um, look at the maximum of, the, of TNT. So it's going to be equals. And you simply go max open bracket, and we want to know what is the maximum number of these three values right here. Close the bracket, hit enter, and it's going to work out that, yep, 7.71 is the maximum of those numbers. We then want to take that little green box in the bottom right hand corner, double click to work out all the maximum values. Next thing we want to do is work out what the min is. So what is the minimum of our TNT for our trials? measured in seconds. So like last time we would like to go equals. This time though we're going to go min, open bracket. What is the minimum of our three trials? Close that bracket and enter. So 7.28 is the minimum. From that point forward, that, that point we want to then work out what half the range is. Now it's probably, um, if you want to, you can do this on one step. I'm actually going to do it in two steps just to kind of break down the process. So what I'm going to do is work out what the range is, just the range by itself, which is basically max minus min. So equals max minus min. Enter. So 0.43 is the difference. Hit that, um, that square in the bottom right hand corner or drag it down and we're going to get our, our range. After all of that, we now know that half of the range is our absolute uncertainty in, the, in 10 periods. Okay, that's 10t. So therefore, we're going to go, um, we'll just call this half range. for 10t. Okay, let's wrap that text, make it a bit tidier. And half our range is going to be 0 0.5, sorry, I'm going to go equal sign, for, equal sign first, 0 0.5 times, just a little asterisk button there, times that number there, that's half of the range, hit enter. Take that little green box, drag it down, double click, and that is half of the range for 10t. Now, final step, that's the, the range for 10t. What we want to know is the absolute uncertainty for just the period. So the last thing we're going to do is divide that by 10. So the absolute uncertainty Just bring that across so you can see it. The absolute uncertainty in T, the period. Right, now that will be measured in seconds. And that should also be seconds over there as well. What I'll do is I'll actually highlight that just so that we know that it is the uncertainty to make life easier a bit later on. So absolute uncertainty in T is going to be equal to half the range for 10T divided by 10. So equals the first cell divided by 10. And there goes half our range divided by 10. So those numbers there represent the absolute uncertainty for our period. Last step, we know that absolute uncertainties need to be rounded to one significant figure. So we'll just quickly fix that up by changing the decimal places and making sure they're all correct to one significant figure. And that 
there is looking pretty good. Now, that method, that half range rule, can be used for any kind of situation where you're averaging results. Okay, it's simply just half the range. Next step is to then go to your graph from before, our graph of t versus square root mass, and we need to add error bars to that graph, which I will explain in the next tutorial.